Hi guys and welcome to your weekly horoscope for Monday the 2nd of March going through until Sunday the 8th of March 2020. Thanks for joining me. This is a week of big extremes. It's like a seesaw effect. One minute you're up, then you're down. So I'm going to break this week down into days. The horoscope is for all signs of the zodiac. So whether you're a sun sign Aries or Sagittarius, it doesn't matter. What I do is I look at the sky and how the relationships form between these planets and how those relationships then impact us here on planet Earth. The horoscope is also based on UK time, so just bear that in mind. Starting with Monday the 2nd of March, we've got the moon in Gemini. So the moon in Gemini is chatty, it's optimistic, it can be naive at times as well because it's always searching for information. It squares the Sun in Pisces and Neptune in Pisces. So it for forms a stressful relationship with your identity, which is saying be nurturing, be spiritual, be caring. And the water planet Neptune, which is all about spirituality and water and, and putting yourself last and putting other people first. The Gemini moon though also forms a quincux which is a positive relationship with Mars and Capricorn and Mars is the red planet, the, the bulldozer, it's ambition and drive and I want. So on Monday the 2nd of March you begin the week by being eminently practical and you're able to make changes to your work. Job interviews are fabulous today despite the Mercury retrograde, we've got 8 more days to go. Uh, Mercury retrograde is when Mer the planet Mercury, the communication planet which rules Gemini and Virgo, appears to be going backwards and it can cause problems for us in communication. It makes a change this week which I'll get into. It moves back into Aquarius on Wednesday. So I'll tell you a bit more about that in a second. But um, on this day, on the Monday, you're not overly creative or un you're not interested in some sort of unreal fantasy life and you want to get things done. So you're siding much more with Mars in Capricorn saying let's get to work, this will be fun, this will be great, we can do something meaningful here, we can build a house. You'll side with that side rather than the, oh, you know, the very ethereal and spacey kind of side. On Tuesday, the 3rd of March, not ethereal and spacey, I mean kind of um, distanced from reality somewhat, like someone who's in a, in a bubble or in a dream state, that kind of thing. On Tuesday, the 3rd of March, Venus is in Aries, so the love planet is in the aggressive sign of Aries, Mars rules Aries, so it's like Venus is now Xena, the warrior princess, okay? She is at odds with Saturn and Capricorn. Saturn is the rules. So imagine Father Time sitting there and saying, these are the rules, these are the spiritual principles that apply. And you're Venus and Aries riding around this big tower going ee, 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 with your whip and, you know, galloping around and you don't give you don't care, you're on a mission, you're a warrior, god, goddess. The moon is in Gemini, so you want information, it's your, it, you're entitled to it. And that moon sextiles Venus and Aries, so it adds even more, you know, you tell yourself that story even more. I am the strongest, biggest, best, best. I can do this. And it forms a square, so it's at odds with Neptune and Pisces, so this water stuff of being passive and just being in your own little corner, no. We're nixing that. We're going full Xena warrior princess mode. Okay, so on Tuesday, if you're in a relationship or if there's some sort of an offer that's made to you, which seems too good to be true, then you can rest assured that it is too good to be true and that you've had the wool pulled over your eyes. So there's no, it's crystal clear, okay? You really need to keep your eyes and ears open don't take everything on someone's word. Yes, of course, trust people who are trustworthy, but if you're getting into some serious commitment on Tuesday, you need it in writing. You need to have the facts um, in black and white. You can't, 
leave things with a handshake. That's a no-no on Tuesday. Be especially careful as well around the office water cooler kind of gossip environment because there's a lot of room for miscommunication and misunderstandings to arrive. You know, in the office, you, you, you meet people at the water cooler and then you just discuss what's going on and you, you, know, you just try and make chit-chats and usually you talk about other colleagues and it's harmless, but sometimes it can, ta it, it can really be malicious and you can really malign someone. And don't get involved in gossip or anything like that on Tuesday the 3rd of March because you may not mean it maliciously and you're just passing the time while you're getting some water. Other people may mean it maliciously and they may use you to do their dirty work. Those are the worst kind of situations where you know you've been manipulated by someone into doing something awful that you never would have realized to someone else and you realize it was the person instigating it in the first place who tricked you. So don't allow yourself to be tricked. When you are tricked, a lot of us pick up a resentment about that. We become angry and we resent the fact that we've been used. So we get angry about things like that. Now the important thing is you pick up a resentment. It's not given to you, it's acquired, okay? You choose, I mean, if someone slaps you around the face, you, you pick up the resentment, which is very normal. If someone slaps you in the face, you're like, what? I'm going to slap back. That's the impulse. But um, you're the one who is doing the picking up and deciding that I'm going to retaliate. And retaliation isn't going to work for you today. So you're going to have to take the high road, which is sometimes really hard but it is the best way forward and you'll be able to take the high road. I mean, sometimes you're just caught in a hook and the anger just takes you. That won't happen to you today because you are, you have the presence of mind to see where people are trying to con you. Wednesday, the 4th of March, we have the moon going into Cancer. So the first change to the moon now in the middle of the week 4th of March, the moon goes into Cancer at 4.26 in the morning. Mercury, the communication planet, does move back now into Aquarius. So that's really helpful because Mercury is the transportation and communication planet. It's in an air sign, Aquarius. The water bearer happens to be an air sign. And the element of air is masculine. And it's about exchanging ideas. So until... Mercury goes direct on the 9th of March. This moon in Aquarius really gives you a reprieve from all of this miscommunication and misunderstanding. Because Aquarius is so cerebral in its thinking anyway. Mercury in Aquarius sextiles Venus in Aries. So the communication planet is able to communicate and it forms harmonious relationships or it gets together with Xena the warrior princess so again be careful of what you're saying here on Wednesday but they also sextile the Cancer moon which then opposes Mars and Capricorn and it trines the Sun in Pisces Venus at the end of the day also moves into Taurus which is much better for Venus than being in Aries because Venus in Aries is like this this um, Amazon warrior goddess whereas Venus rules Taurus it loves the sign of the bull it's very comfortable and it likes luxuries and Venus loves being in that sign so it's another so as we're getting nearer and nearer to Mercury moving direct, everything else is conspiring to help you as well. So on Wednesday, with, it, with the planet of communication going back into the air sign, it gives you a reprieve from communication issues. Although you may feel somewhat bewildered and lost with all the ideas that are now popping in and out of your head and all over the place, so you may get stuck because suddenly it's like, oh, okay, everything is possible. 
and I don't really know if I was right or wrong before. So make sure you focus on one, maximum two things on Wednesday. Don't overload yourself with things to do because you may feel overwhelmed. For instance, if you pick one or two things, friends and family, that's enough. Or work, I'm gonna focus on work and relaxation in the evening, that's enough. If you pick up too many things, it's one of those days where you can just be like, oh, I've got so much to do that I can't do any of it. And then it all just falls to pieces. So treat yourself well and realize that you can only do one thing at a time. And don't put that pressure on yourself to achieve everything in one day. You can't solve everything in one day. Thursday, the 5th of March, the Cancer Moon opposes Jupiter Pluto and Saturn, so all the big boys, good luck, change and stability. They're all in the sign of the worker. So this sensitive moon, my feelings, I feel nurturing against this giant hard wall of outer planets saying work. And the Cancer moon then also trines Neptune, the water planet in Pisces, which is much softer and it forms a much more harmonious relationship with Neptune and with Sun in Pisces both Neptune and the Sun being in the water sign of Pisces and the planet of Neptune itself being water so on Thursday it's the exact opposite of Monday that's why it's a week of such extremes you're full of feeling you don't have any direction and you may find it difficult to focus on one thing at a time You've been practicing that the day before, so keeping things very simple is super important. Thursday the 5th is the day to lie in the hammock on the beach and to dream up the content of your next masterpiece or to get the intuitive message that you've been trying to get. What am I supposed to do with my life? Or making contact with your spirit guide. You've been trying for years, but it's never worked. It works today. It's like J.K. Rowling, or Rowling, however you say her name, Harry Potter author. The way she said that she was on a train, it, it stuck with me because I resent it. <laughs> she was on a train and she said, oh, Harry Potter just walked into my head one day. And the reason I resent that is because she makes it seem so easy and she gives people false hope because she doesn't talk about her skill as a writer because she's incredibly skilled as a writer. I mean, the world that supposedly just walked into her head, fabulous, I mean, what a gift, but she, has, she was able to actually execute that and put it into words and then to have it published, the diligence, the grit, all of that, to her, the manuscripts were turned down by loads of publishers before someone picked it up. So she doesn't talk about all those things and that's why I don't like that. It just walked into my head. Things usually aren't that easy, or they can be, but then you have to do the work afterwards. It's like the secret. I imagine a check coming through the door, and then a check is supposed to come through the door. You're for forgetting step two and three. Step one is imagining the good things. Step two is then listening to the guidance that says actually do these things, these practical things, and then step three is getting it because of your practical action can see me getting all worked up over this you see because it's a mixture of gifts and talents and being in the right place at the right time she was on the train when Harry Potter walked into her head but then also having the muscle and the skill to actually see that through and today Thursday is a day where you have both on Friday the 6th of March the moon moves into Leo at 9 29 in the morning this is now confidence and hear the line roar, I'm having fun. It's exuberant, energetic, fiery. It's the first real fire that we're seeing here in the week and we've already had major seesaws going on so we're adding heat to the, to the ingredient now. The moon in Leo forms a harmonious trine with Chiron in Aries. Chiron is the asteroid known as the wounded healer and it forms a tense relationship is square with the love planet now in Taurus much more comfortable and Uranus the planet of the unexpected also in Taurus so with the love sign and the love planet 
coming together again, Venus and Taurus, there is much more comfort and ease when it comes to your relationships. Yes, the Mercury retrograde is still on for another few more days. But with it being an Aquarius, you get a respite from it. And with Venus changing into a sign that it likes, because in Aries it's too much. It's like, I need to get love. And that doesn't work on planet Earth. When you chase something, it runs away from you. In Taurus, it lies back and it's comfortable and it's saying, oh, I love all this blue sky I'm just looking at and other people are attracted to that sense of I love my life. Now Venus um, being in that sign and with Uranus in the equation as well it's a good day to take a risk. You may be surprised with a really positive outcome. So it's the day for all the thrill seekers and all the gamblers and all of you guys who like a bit of a thrill and a kick and a bit of a scare. This is the day for you to, to, to seek that thrill and really get satisfaction out of it. Obviously don't do anything I wouldn't do and you'll be bright as rain. Saturday the 7th of March we've got the moon still in Leo so still fired up still looking for adventure and excitement it quincuxes so it forms a positive relationship with the masculine planet Mars in Capricorn saying work 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 the Sun and Neptune in Pisces I am spirit therefore everything will be as I want it to be and Jupiter and Pluto in Capricorn saying, if you want your life to change, then you have to do the legwork and you have to work hard for those changes. And if you do, we will reward you by giving you amazing outcomes beyond your wildest dreams. So Saturday, the 7th, it's amazing. I just want to jump and scream and shout. This is my excited face, okay? Woohoo! Jazz hands. Yay! That's as much as I can do it. <laughs> Yeah, because I've, I know, I won't go into that. I've had to adapt my behavior when I was a kid to pass for straight. So I can't even now in these, like totally like get excited and pretend to be like a little girl because it just beat out of me. But on Saturday, you can do no wrong. No wrong, okay? So it's the day to plan a family dinner or to have some sort of social gathering you're going to have a wonderful, charming, really easy, comfortable, lovely time. So time spent socializing and enjoying the company of others is the way to make the most of Saturday the 7th. Finally, moving on to Sunday the 8th of March, we have the moon going into Virgo at 10.48 in the morning. So it changes again now in Virgo. The moon in Virgo likes analysis and it likes to look at lots of information and to make little notes like a professor putting red writing in the sides of your essay. That's why they, you have to double space so they have lots of room for their criticism. The, and there's nothing wrong with criticism if it's constructive and there's no such thing as constructive criticism unless you're doing something that requires real skill and precision. If you're doing economics or the law or medicine you must be precise and you need to quote case law and you know, need to know the human anatomy and what happens if you make the wrong incision you need to know absolutely everything spot on Virgo likes that but if you're someone who is doing something emotional and spiritual and from the heart Virgo can be really destructive when it comes into contact with things like that because Virgo can often be very diligent and determined to nurture and to take care of others but it doesn't do it like cancer. Cancer is like oh I love you I need to take care of you. Virgo is like we're related so it's my duty to take care of you. It's a whole different thing and Virgo feels obligated to take care of but there's no love in it. It's just criticism and that can really hammer you into the ground emotionally if every little thing if you're criticizing yourself first and foremost that make a decision to stop that once and for all and you can make a decision i am not going to dissect myself anymore 
It's fine. I'm not going to do that anymore. But you can make that decision. Because emotional, beautiful, spiritual feeling things are not meant to be scrutinized by science and Virgo. It's like, it's like taking a... I don't know, a, an apple and um, telling it off for not being a puppy. It, it just makes no sense. So Venus in Taurus also conjuncts Uranus in Taurus, the planet of energy and the miraculous and the unexpected. The Virgo moon forms a harmonious trine with Venus, the planet of love and beauty, and Uranus in Taurus and Chiron in Aries. Excuse me. <clears throat> the Sun in Pisces conjunct Neptune in Pisces, Neptune being the water planet, and it's daylight savings here in the UK, so the clocks go forward by an hour, so we have longer days, more sunlight, which is great. So, oh, this is such a literal interpretation, I didn't even get that. Sunday the 8th of March, you feel very perceptive and you're able to see things which were hidden before. Bing! So it's not just more daylight in actual literal terms, more sunlight. You actually have more enlightenment. You see things that were dark. So it's a great day to connect or to learn with your higher self or the universe through meditation. Or you may be notice behavior of yours that no longer serves you or you don't need to behave that way anymore because you no longer need the payoff that you used to get from it. Like the Virgo need I just mentioned to be of service. That's just this guilt feeling of I have to. It's like when you go to a party. It's that you walk in and there are four people there and it's a party and uh, everyone's there and they're all really glum and miserable. You feel pretty glum and miserable yourself, but you're like, this can't be happening because it's a party. So I'm going to, it's, it's up to me to bring some fun and joy and excitement into this place, even though you don't feel it yourself. So the thing that bothers you isn't the actual feeling, it's that people aren't sticking to the rules. <laughs> it's a completely different criteria, you see? So on Saturday and Sunday, what I'm warning you about is to not judge yourself, or really on Sunday mostly, is not to judge yourself so harshly with this Virgo moon, because you're, you're now suddenly uh, judging yourself on criteria which were never even there before. So how can you... How can you succeed in something that you weren't even working on to begin with? So if you find yourself beating yourself up on Sunday, stop it. Immediately. And um, the wonderful thing about becoming aware of a behavior that's, that compels us. That's not a choice, but it compels us to be a certain way because we feel like we have to. When you get rid of that, you make space for something wonderful and loving and relaxing to come in. I can let go of this facade. You can take the mask off. You can let it go. And you realize that you're safe enough and you're working on yourself so much that a certain area of your life you don't need to do anymore. You don't need to make up for anything because you are not lacking. So you see in yourself what other people have been seeing for years. And you finally see it in yourself for yourself on Sunday. So that's a lovely end to the week. I hope you have a wonderful week. If you would like a personal reading with me about any of these issues that have come up, or if you want to discover what your life purpose is, what your vocational aptitudes are, what your um, strengths and weaknesses are when it comes to love or children or money or work or competing, anything at all really. I can look at the astro cartography to see what areas of the world work for you, where the energy is best and where it isn't. Um, I look at the progress chart and the transits to see at what points 
in your life you are at now and what you ought to be focusing on and the transits what's going on in the sky at the moment and how that influences you over the next couple of months and years and we have you know we have pluto jupiter and saturn the three big 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 boys sitting together most of this year officially saturn and jupiter conjunct each other from the 21st of december 2020 this year so watch the yearly horoscopes for your sun sign that's helpful i tell you what house that happens in for your sign so you know what area of your life it happens in but with that being in place already in 2020 transformation complete transformation a completely new foundation in life and good luck wherever that is happening to you in 2020 all of us are going to experience major changes in 2020 whether they're great or not so great and how do you deal with those and how do you work with them because we have to move forward right that's our only choice we can't give up we keep going despite what happens and because of what happens and sometimes we even get presents along the way which help us to keep going so be inspired and be comforted by sunday and look at that light and say yes i can see the light at the end of the tunnel and get on your chariot and ride to victory there you go so have a wonderful wonderful week like i said if you want a personal reading with me just go to the website gregoryscott.com to order it if you like this video then please subscribe and join our lovely little community that we've got here on youtube the people on this channel are really nice spiritual seekers i moderate it really heavily so anyone who comes here with anything that i deem to be stupid or negative I, it's my channel so i can do what i like <laughs> so i just get rid of those people i don't even there are no second chances if i don't like what you say you're hidden forever and that's how i i'm being very honest about that and that's how i've kept the channel and it's a nice atmosphere and um we still have people here and they've been vetted so to speak so feel free to talk to people on the channel it's a good place if you really like the video then please share it online so that other people can see it facebook instagram twitter wherever you're active that'd be really awesome because you'd be advertising for me then and i'd be so so grateful i hope you have a lovely week and i'll speak to you next week